Welcome back. While we still hold the base here, that is. It seems that the Japanese don't waste any time. They've taken Hong Kong, landed on the Thai coast and also on Malaya, where they've pushed the British south towards Singapore. Our allies deployed their battleship force to counter the landings, but it was promptly sunk by Jap bombers based in Indochina. Thus, the Japs have gained control of all air and sea lanes in the South China Sea. Obviously, the next target will be Singapore, and there's little hope to hold them back from taking the city. The Philippines were attacked with multiple landings on the north and south parts of Luzon, forcing the mixed U.S. local defenses to abandon Manila, including our submarine base there, and retreat into the Bataan Peninsula. For the moment, our troops are holding back the Japanese, but we don't know for how long they can continue and what the supply situation is. It has been suggested that submarines be used to supply the troops and evacuate key personnel from the region. So please, make all preparations pending your orders. Hello and welcome back to the Southwest Pacific for another episode of Silent Hunter 4. We're at the port of Surabaya in Java, making preparations to once again get underway for our third war patrol in our Holland-type S-boat, the USS S-38. Okay, here in the office, let's get down to business. Here's our crew. Everyone has healed from their bumps and bruises from the depth charging last time, and they are ready to go. We've got a full load of Mark 10 torpedoes in the tubes. No new available uh, equipment. We still have our 4-inch deck gun. No surface radar. There is one big thing that I want to do before we go out, and that is to assign an actual uh, chief engineer officer to the main propulsion plant. If you look back here, all the machinist mates, you can see that the highest ranking guy that we've got is a, uh, is a first class. So with no khaki back there, it's definitely a case of the insane asylum being run by the inmates. So uh, you'll notice that we've got two chiefs up here in the forward torpedo room, and that's really unnecessary. So we're going to get rid of Chief Austin here. He's got the lower of the two weaponry stats so we're just gonna send him back to the manpower pool and then we're gonna pull out a new officer and this looks like Ensign Sylvia and he's got a machinery rating of 60 so this is gonna add a significant amount of leadership to the main propulsion plant the command structure here is not set up at all how you would really see on a World War II sub in fact all of the officers of the deck on the right would all have collateral duties in you know doing other things in the sub so out of the between five to seven officers, you'd have one that would be both the navigator and also the chief engineer, or would be the commissary officer, or, you know, many collateral duties all at once. But that's not how the game has it set up here. We're just going to go ahead and assign a, essentially a department head back into the propulsion area. So we have an officer, or at least a chief, in every compartment now to sort of keep an eye on things and provide leadership, especially when we're at uh, general quarters. Okay, and with that completed, it's January 11th, 1942. Let's go ahead and uh, check out what our upcoming mission is going to be. Operational order to Jim Stavridis, USS S-38. Proceed to the Malacca Passage choke point at the north end of the Malacca Sea via the Banda Sea and conduct combat patrol within 100 nautical miles of its center point. Additional direction will be provided via message traffic. Make reports as necessary to ABDA Task Force 3. So nice, not too far of a journey. You can see here, here's Surabaya in Java. We're going to head right around the bottom up into the combat patrol area here. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's clear those moorings and get underway. Okay, back out at the sprawling base of Surabaya. Quite large. And here's the S-38 tied up pier side. Let's get aboard. Yes, sir. Ahead slow. Yes, sir. As we pull out past the lighthouse and make our turn to the right to head east, out of Java and uh, for the first part of the transit I want to talk today about our submarine's main armament the Mark 10 torpedoes 
The Mark 10 was a World War I torpedo, first introduced into Navy service in 1915, making it even older than our already ancient S-boat. It was 21 inches across and 16 feet long, 4 feet shorter than the later standard Mark 14 torpedo that we find on the fleet boats. They were the final incarnation of the Bliss Leave It Torpedo, a 1904 design that improved upon the British Whitehead Torpedo of the 1890s. Mark 10 Mod 3s, which is what we're using here, had a single speed setting of 36 knots, a range of 3,500 yards, and had a TNT warhead of 497 pounds with a contact exploder. Mark 10s were the primary armament for S-boats because their torpedo tubes were too short to fit the long Mark 14s, but fleet boats made use of them during the early part of the war as well. Their simple contact detonator made them far more reliable than the Mark 14s, and many fleet boat skippers preferred them. Even so, during the war, only one out of every three Mark 10s actually contacted a target. Fleet boats used an adapter that allowed the Mark 10s to be plugged into the torpedo data computer, which fed constantly updated gyro angles to the torpedo while in the tube. But as far as I can tell, TDCs were never installed in the S boats, which meant the torpedoes had to be programmed by hand. The first TDC wasn't introduced until 1938, and it seems that the oldest boat to be retrofitted with one was the Dolphin, a fleet boat from the early 30s. The 1920s submarines, like ours, were too incompatible and were left to fend for themselves. Which would explain why we don't see a TDC here in the command room. It's not in another part of the ship, which I had thought maybe was the case, it's simply not on board. Instead, we would be calculating our torpedo attacks on a handheld slide rule called the Torpedo Angle Solver Mark 7, more commonly known as the banjo. The banjo was circular with two rotating discs and a rotating arm. It's very similar to the E6B flight computer, both in its look and in how you operate it, and that's a tool that any aviators out there will still be familiar with today. One side of the disc calculated torpedo gyro angle and on the other side, an angle converter determined target course. Entering target speed, distance, angle, and bearing on the discs, all the same information that we input into the TDC, gave a pre-war skipper the gyro angle he needed for firing. The firing solution would be calculated slightly ahead of the target. The torpedo gyros manually set down in the torpedo room, and as the target sailed into the predicted intercept point, the torpedoes would be launched. With the inaccuracies of hand calculating, a full salvo was fired to ensure at least one hit. Mark 10s also suffered from the same deep running problem that plagued the newer Mark 14s. By 1942, it was determined that Mark 10s commonly ran four feet deeper than set. This also contributed to the Mark 10s low hit rate, as otherwise well-aimed torpedoes could cruise harmlessly under the hull of a target. For historians, those who like submarines or play subsim games, it seems fairly obvious today that stealthily torpedoing unaware merchants is not only the primary job of subs, but also the only way that they can safely operate. Historically, however, not only were most subs never designed for such a mission, it was considered the worst possible war crime. Let us head back a few decades to the First World War when Germany deployed a new and terrifying weapon that nearly won the war. At the time, Britain still ruled the seas, one of the most important self-identifying traits of the empire, and the pride of the Royal Navy was its heavy battleships. Britain longed for a traditional surface battle slugfest where its superior numbers would wipe out the German fleet, recalling the glory of Trafalgar and other defining British sailing ship victories. However, the Germans would, with one exception in the Battle of Jutland, refuse to oblige. As on land, both countries had prepared for the wrong kind of war at sea, and all German naval policy, even the design of warships, had been based on the assumption that in the event of war, the British fleet would attack the Germans near their bases. With the British trying to lure the Germans into open water, and the Germans refusing to leave the safety of their coastal defenses, the submarine was the only German ship capable of forcing Britain out of the war. 
Unprepared for an underwater threat, the Royal Navy's impotence against the U-boats was a huge blow to their naval, and therefore national, pride. One British admiral dismissed all submarines as underhanded, unfair, and damned un-English. Submarines brought the stain of civilian casualties to the sea, a theater of war that previously had been reserved for combat between professional military men. One British propagandist wrote that the fine, manly Freemasonry of all navies had been corrupted by the U-boats, and that not until the coming of the German submarine commander was the Brotherhood of the Sea destroyed. The primary point of contention was the U-boat's failure to follow the international rules of prize warfare, an obsolete holdover from sailing ship days. The rules forbid the sinking of any passenger ships, and merchant ships could not be sunk until their crews were warned and placed in safety. Submarines, of course, had no room for passengers, and relied on stealth for survival, meaning that there was no way that they could operate under such rules. British propaganda voiced outrage over U-boats sinking innocent merchant and passenger ships, but the German side of the story was overlooked. Converted passenger liners were often used as troop transports, and it was well known to German captains that British passenger ships transported weapons in their holds. Merchant captains had also been given secret orders by the British Admiralty to ram subs at full speed before they could fire. This made it dangerous or impossible for a U-boat to surface and give the warning prescribed by international law, and also technically classified the merchant ship as a combatant. Even the American ambassador to Germany at the time wrote that English passenger ships sailing with orders to ram submarines and often armed could not be put quite in the category of altogether peaceful merchantmen. Despite British outrage over submariner assassins and pirates, the convoluted legal status of merchants made the reality of submarine warfare far less cut and dry than reported. The reports of civilian deaths were also without context. German U-boat attacks while blockading Britain led to 75,000 civilian deaths, but the British long-range blockade of Germany killed over 750,000, ten times more as the British definition of contraband included food, clothing, medicine, and even raw materials such as wool were confiscated and denied to the German people. Proving the effectiveness of the submarine blockade, though, by April of 1917, Britain had only six weeks' grain supply left as a result of U-boat activity. Had Germany committed fully to unrestricted submarine warfare, instead of starting and stopping it several times like they did, they might have successfully blockaded Britain right out of the war long before America joined. Despite truly brutal warfare on land and the cavalier use of poison gas by both sides, it was the U-boat force that continued to rankle the Allies more than anything to the point that the Treaty of Versailles included specific requirements that Germany surrender its remaining subfleet and was prohibited from building any more. Fast forward 20 years. The American Submarine Service at the outbreak of the Second World War was a direct continuation of World War I Allied thinking. The entire concept of the fleet boat was a submarine that would be fast enough to keep up with a battle line and scout ahead for the all-important battleships. Sub's primary targets were warships, as had been the priority of British submarines in World War I. America, as were all Allied nations, was still committed to the obsolete prize warfare rules, and indeed, Hitler's use of U-boats again drew the same moral outrage from Britain as it had 20 years earlier. The priority of the U.S. Navy is clear when we look at the 36 submarine exercises conducted in 1940 and 41. 21 of these were directed against battleships and carriers, 8 were against cruisers and destroyers, and only one was against a cargo ship convoy. The Japanese, likewise, planned to concentrate their subs on warships and expected America to do the same, which led to their early war convoys being woefully unprotected. The best Japanese anti-sub ships were assigned to battle fleets to protect high-value targets, while convoys got minimal escort from old or second-rate ships like mine layers and sub-chasers. This complete misunderstanding of the submarine weapon system led to shockingly bad performance in the opening months of the war. 
Americans couldn't believe how little their submarines interfered with the Japanese invasion of the Philippines. Another huge factor in this lack of performance was the caliber of interwar submarine officers. Pre-war submarine doctrine frowned on reckless aggressiveness. Submarine commands had gone to career-minded officers, almost invariably Annapolis graduates, who kept their noses and submarines clean and their sailors out of trouble, and who didn't try to force new ideas on their seniors. Training exercises had given an exaggerated idea of the capabilities of aircraft and destroyers to find subs, and it was assumed a depth charge could sink a sub from up to half a mile away. The incredibly clear waters of the Pacific worried naval planners, and sub-captains were discouraged from making periscope attacks at all because they would be spotted. Instead, they were ordered to attack from 100 feet using sonar, a completely impractical prospect with the technology of the time. Actual war experience turned all of these assumptions on their head. Subs were surviving depth charge hits from as close as 15 or 20 feet. Sonar attacks were completely impractical and useless. In 1942, 30% of all submarine captains were relieved for being too timid or unfit for command. This paved the way for a new generation of junior officers, often reservists, who were being fast-tracked from colleges to the front lines. They, along with the successful older captains who remained, recognized that brass polishing and bulkhead painting were not going to win a real shooting war, and changed the submarine culture to one that instead rewarded results and daring. Super cautious pre-war thinking was abandoned, as were the prize warfare rules. By the end of the war, U.S. submarines, which represented only 2% of the Navy's force, had sunk 55% of the Japanese merchant fleet, including two-thirds of its tankers. Japanese industries, reliant on incoming raw materials, were devastated. The Allies, once so scornful of Germany's tactics, now adopted unrestricted submarine warfare for themselves and proved, once again, that an underwater blockade could effectively wreck the entire economy of an island nation. Hot damn, we got something. Slow screws bearing 306 out to our left. We've been out to sea for almost two weeks now, and this is the first contact we've had of any kind. Sounds like it's uh, maybe just a single ship. 305 seems to be. Contact! Merchant! Closing! Bearing! Three! Oh, they're zero, closing! Four. Long range! All right, let's uh, move into position here. So we are just under the yes, waves. Sir. We're down at periscope Numerous. depth. Four, three. Yes, sir. We're ahead patrolling slow. at ahead one third. Periscope's already up. Let's look over at 305. There she is, just peeking over the horizon. So we'll uh, move to the left and get set up for an attack run. There she is. Up to full speed now. We're going to start marking the target's progress. Um, now, last time, you know, I was walking us through the math behind calculating target speed based on distance over time. And uh, actually I actually have a chart up on my wall that I made years ago where I did the math for one and two minutes and what the distance would be and what that would equate to for speed. And like in the episode last time, I actually just did out the math just to show how it was done. So it's funny because uh, if I had done one more minute, I would have realized what a, what several people pointed out to me in the comments on the last video, which was at three minutes, 
if you just take the distance and divide it by 100, it gives you a very fast estimation of the speed. That's sort of a, a popular rule of thumb that I just was never aware of because I don't really watch a lot of other people's videos on stuff, so I just didn't do it. I've just been doing it my way uh, for so long and just using my own chart. So, so yeah, so here we're going to estimate a three-minute run, which comes out to be 700 yards. So we divide that by 100. We have a seven-knot speed estimated on this target as she's closing in on us. Coming in uh, for what appears to be a good perpendicular shot. And that was just made using the sonar only. So let's pop the scope back up. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. She's left of the nose. There she is. And she's just starting to come over the horizon. So that means she's uh, just outside of five miles. Does that flag look Japanese to you? Okay, we've got a bit of a mystery here. The ship is definitely not Japanese. You can see here we've got a tricolored flag flying. Um, and at first I thought this was a Dutch ship, because that would make sense, right? You've got the, uh, the Dutch had many colonies here in the Pacific. But I double checked and uh, the colors are upside down. So this would actually be a Yugoslavian flag. Um, which is a little confusing because Yugoslavia would have been conquered by the Axis at this point, but there was several uh, free Yugoslav uh, governments in operation, so... Um, yeah, either the flag is upside down and it's supposed to be a Dutch ship, or there's a random Yugoslav ship out here, which may or may not be realistic. I don't know what the odds are of a, of a Yugoslavian ship being way out here in the Pacific, but... Based on the fact that the lookouts didn't call it away like it was an enemy ship, we're gonna go ahead and secure battle stations. I think it's a I think it's a neutral or allied ship. So false alarm everybody. Secure from battle stations. Surface the boat. Yes, sir. Surface. We're breaking Surface. off the attack. Surface. We're gonna head in for a closer look. I suppose we'll find out real quick. If it is an Axis-controlled ship, they'll probably either try to ram us or shoot at us. So that would be a good indication, but I think it's just a neutral or friendly at this point. So we'll go check it out. Yes, sir. New course. Four. Yes, sir. Flying up alongside. Letting them know we're here. Kill off. We'll let them continue their journey as we'll continue ours as well. So that's pretty interesting. I was super excited. This is the first contact, like I said, that I've seen in weeks of patrolling now. We've had nothing. And now the very first ship was not an enemy. And um, I think that well illustrates how easy it was at the time to either misidentify a ship or to just fire either in darkness or bad weather and take out uh, a friendly ship. You know, we talked about the real S-38, just hours out of dock, uh, friendly firing a Norwegian, you know, merchantman, and killing a bunch of guys because they thought it was, in its blacked out state, uh, a Japanese troop carrier or some sort of assault ship. So here in broad daylight, luckily we were able to see the flag um, because you can't just go off the ship model because the same ship model is used for all the countries. So. Yeah, so that was a little interesting event, but we'll move on now and continue our patrol up to the northeast. Hopefully, in a reasonable amount of time, we'll actually find uh, some real enemy activity. Otherwise, we're going to have to maybe go striking out on our own to go look for, uh, you know, to go prowl some possible uh, merchant transit areas. But we'll see how it goes. All right, people, we've got something big brewing out to our left here. It is now February 14th, 1942, two weeks since we left port on uh, January 28th. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. It's 11 o'clock at night, and uh, I've just picked up something on the hydrophones out to our left, 
out to the northwest. And uh, it sounds like a big ass convoy, so. Coming around to full speed, we'll make a turn towards it and start tracking its movement and see what's up. Also, uh, the it's not storming out, but the water is very, very choppy. We got rough seas tonight. So, pretty pitch black. Bad sea state. We've got fast screws out there at around 350, or 345, I guess. So, sounds like a, an escort ship. And just listen to this. That is not a familiar set. It just sounds like a huge amount of merchant ships all clustered together, so... I'm not sure what to expect. That is a very unusual sound. Um, hmm. I think they're heading southwest. So we'll head northwest to try, uh, try closing the gap on them. Now that we've got a bearing, we'll surface, and we'll run at high speed. And it is super dark. I don't see anything just yet. So apparently we've picked them up on the hydrophones way out over the horizon. Which is lucky. And I think they're somewhere out there around 45 degrees off our right side. Uh, we'll come back towards it. You know, this is such a huge contact. And again, it's the only thing that we've found. I do not want this to get away. Okay, so there's a that's the five mile mark out there. Battery is essentially fully charged still, so I'll probably uh, run without the battery charging on. Oh, there's something. I've got a mast right there at about 20 degrees. I can't tell what it is. It might be one of those escorts. Let's switch to the uh, to the binoculars here, the targeting binoculars. And we'll try to lock onto it. Game is having troubles locking on, I think, because of the low visibility. But there is a target. So let's mark him. I just want to know which way this convoy is going, because if we fuck this up, if we go the wrong way and end up behind it, uh, we might not be able to catch up. And I want to try to get in position. We're at 98% battery. Let's, like I said, turn the battery charging off. Try to squeeze out every knot of speed that we can. It's 11.40 now, so 40 minutes after our initial contact. And now I've lost visual sight of whatever that was that we saw. I cannot find him. Fuck. Our last known contact was out there to the right, which you can see is now fading, so maybe uh, diving back under to try to find him on hydrophones is going to be the thing to do. I have also just made the assumption that they are, in fact, heading southwest, and I have set that course as well. So if I'm wrong, now that we've lost visual contact, if they're heading due west, or maybe even northwest, then I have just screwed us out of this contact. So let's cross our fingers. That's not the case. In fact, let's just turn due west. And we'll see if we can pick them back up visually and re-intercept them, depending on what direction they're going.
Heading back northwest now. Oh, no, there we go. We got a ship spotted. Yes, sir. Holy shit, he's right in front of us. Yes, Fucking sir. escort. Bearing 350. Something like two miles away. Look at that. Huge convoy out behind him. Jesus Christ. Our guys didn't see him, and he apparently has not seen us yet. Yes, sir. New course. One, seven, Hard over to port. Yes, Let's head south. Get away from this guy. I'm... I got my finger poised over the crash dive button. Yes, sir. New course. Three, Actually, you know what? He's moving left. Yes, sir. Let's, uh, let's move up to the northwest to maybe slide in behind him. Oh, shit. Looks like he's pointing right at us. You know what? Back to the south. New course. One, seven, eight. Yes, How did he turn around so fast? Oh, no. There he goes. Now he's... He's heading back yes, south, sir. too. Okay. Down we go. Let's get under the water. This guy's freaking me out. Has he seen us? Searchlights are not on. He's not firing, obviously. It sort of doesn't seem like he has, but maybe he's a little worried. Maybe he suspects something. So, under the waves we go. We'll bring the, uh, the watch standing team down below decks. We'll put the guys on the dive planes and secure the bridge, just in case they do fire. We'll try to keep them safe. Yes, sir. Well, let's just go right down in case there's uh, depth charges coming. Yes, sir. Okay, so that was very interesting. It must be it must be a combination of the darkness and maybe the heavy seas. The lookouts are not seeing things both on our ship and theirs. So we have a very low visibility night. Look at this convoy. I have never seen a convoy this big before. This thing is humongous. There's got to be like 40 or 50 ships here. Current depth, one, six, zero. At first I thought maybe it was a glitch, like it, like the game imprinted two convoys on top of each other, but they've only got uh, the escorts of a single convoy. I think there's, there's uh, three out front and two out back, which is sort of the standard convoy arrangement. There's just a billion ships in the convoy. Again, you can hear it on the on the the hydrophones here just how bizarre it sounds bearing three seven long range just a cacophony bearing three of two, merchant long. screws we picked up another escort on the far side there as well and there's the uh, the the close escort just a few miles off our our port bow yes sir So what to do here? I'm thinking. Passing thermal layer. There's the thermal layer at 150 feet. Yes, sir. Ahead full. Now, based on that one escort we saw, it looked like um, a sub chaser or a mine layer. Oh. Relieve the watch. Oh, look at that. We just uh, the mid watch just rolled over. Oh, that's actually going to suck for those guys, because I'm probably going to call away General Quarters here in a second. You can see the dudes just got off four hours of watch, and now I'm going to have to bring them right back on, which I can tell you from experience blows. That is the worst feeling in the world.
Okay, back on the surface now, making our way towards this convoy. Unfortunately, my worry that we were going to miss the convoy has actually now put us in position uh, back and behind it to the left. So this could be a problem. Um, but we're going to try to maneuver to get in close anyways. Because we might be able to get the speed up over them. I'm still just sort of getting the lay of the land here to see if the uh, if the escorts are going to spot us. Hey, look, the... Uh, I, I want to send HQ a report on this convoy spotting. And I can't do it because the, uh, the computer doesn't recognize that there's a convoy there because we can't see the ships. So I may have to mark a couple with the scope and then maybe it'll be able to send it then. But yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that maybe just that one ship didn't see us, and if we get close we're going to get attacked, but at the same time, maybe if we can hide under this cover of darkness and heavy seas, maybe we could get in close enough and aggressively attack this convoy, and that is what I would like to do. There we go, so now I've marked a handful of ships. Also, let's put a mark on the, on the plot here. And maybe start tracking them just to uh, ensure that they're heading south west, which I'm pretty sure they are at this point. Ugh, and that's 3,000 yards. That's that's about 2,000 yards. And we're about 10,000 yards away. They are quite far. Obviously, nowhere near in range or angle for a torpedo shot. Here's that one escort out on the port side wing. I'm hoping we can maybe just slide behind him. Hmm. So this is a sub chaser. And I I think I was misidentifying some escort ships last time because the sub chaser has the very prominent bow upswept in the front. And uh this ship does not. So what is this? Is this a minesweep? Minesweeper. That sort of looks like it. I think it's a minesweeper. Let's call it that. Is there anything else that has the same basic shape? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so that is a minesweeper. So... The ships with the flat deck, like that, we'll have to remember are yes, Minecraft. And the sub chasers actually have the upswept deck, like I said, with that pointy nose. But I think, either way, these are ships that do not have good underwater capability, despite being sub chaser. I don't think they have hydrophones or active sonar. Maybe they have hydrophones, but definitely not active sonar. There we go. We actually uh, have spotted to the satisfaction of the computer, the convoy. So let's bang off a report back to HQ. Convoy sighted. The biggest damn convoy I've ever seen. Ooh, and there's that escort ship. She's facing back towards us. See, this is the thing that's freaking me out. Do they see us? Or are these just random pre-planned search patterns? Yes, sir. I want to close at top speed, but I also don't want the huge bow wake to give us away. So, what to do, right? There we go, there's another escort. That's the rear, or possibly the far side escort. Looks like another mine layer. Taking a look at the plot here, it's been almost another hour. We're at uh, 12.56, continuing to track this convoy southwest. And we've got some marks. I made some marks uh, on one specific ship. I just chose one 
at random, but now we've got an actual estimated plot. And we're just keeping an eye out for escorts, but nobody has spotted us yet, which is giving me more and more confidence to close, because we seem to have found the perfect night for this. Very dark, uh, no moon apparently, we've got some cloud cover up high, and we've got these very rough seas. Which are not making it easy on us, either. This has been a real bitch, and it's going to be worse to try to actually sight some torpedoes, but uh, at the moment, I think it's also keeping us safe. We're up to 13 knots, by the way, slicing through the waves, which is pretty good. Closing in on the, on the aft port quarter of this convoy. See, the, see what a pain this is. Trying to get the tops of those masts right on the waterline, which is not only changing, it's being obscured by these waves in front of us. Estimated range. 7,100 yards. And we'll, uh, we'll call it 145-ish at 150 degrees of an estimated bearing. Again, these are just my preliminary estimations, just to start getting an idea. Tracking one particular target that looks juicy on the far side here, so we're marking that. And, uh... There, we'll start the chronometer again, and we'll take a time-based speed estimation and see if it's even possible for us to, uh, to catch up to them. As long as they're below 12 or 13 knots, then we could actually close. So like I was talking about earlier, we keep finding, or keep running into these convoys that are guarded with pretty garbage ships. These subchasers, mine layers, they don't really have the tools to do the job, and that's because the Japanese Empire was as unprepared for unrestricted sub-warfare as the Americans were. So all the good escort ships, all the actual destroyers, um, they're out with the battle fleets. They're protecting battleships, carriers, because that's where they thought they were most important. So I guess that the fact that there's five or six escorts of this giant convoy at all means it must be pretty goddamn important. Terrible sea state, but at least it's not raining like it was before. This large modern composite freighter is what we're tracking, by the way, as we're coming up on our three-minute mark. Mark. And let's check out what do we got here. We have an estimated range of... Uh, there's 900 yards, 850 yards, so it's like right in the middle. So like 8.5 knots, maybe 9 knots at the most, which is great news. So we are a few knots faster than that, even in this slow old boat. We're going to be able to catch this convoy. Let's see here. There's 180 degrees. And their course is roughly 156 down there. That, of course, is 360 minus 156, so we're just to the west of south. Look at this parade of ships, another escort there. There's a large uh, composite. In fact, I think the one I'm, I'm tracking, there's a ton of large composite and other huge ships in this convoy. There you can see the formation of the three escorts 
on the after end of the formation. You got a central one, and then the two wing flyers, and then there's uh, there's two or three out front of the convoy as well. Okay, so what the hell are we going to do? We've got to get through the escort screen to get to any of the convoy ships. We don't have the torpedo range to fire from outside the escort range, especially behind them like this. So I have a cunning plan. And some of you are not going to like it, and I don't care. going to try to slip in between the two port side escorts, the rear escort and the left one. And they are close. So just as a backup for defense, we're going to man the deck gun. Terrible seas, we're going to have to lash these guys to the deck as well, but look how close this escort is, and the juicy targets lay just beyond. This one man right here is in between us and the promised land. Yes, sir. Okay, down to eight and a half knots, matching what I think is the convoy speed, hopefully cutting down on the wake bow. We need to remove this obstacle. Nope, not American. Come on, there we go, Japanese. So she should be a mine layer. Or mine sweeper, I'm sorry. Mine sweeper, she has a draft of six feet, which is exceedingly shallow. But this, if we can sneak attack, get some torpedoes into her, and just blow up this escort. It'll blow the door wide open for us to race through and get close on the convoy, possibly without the other escorts even knowing what's going on. Tube one's coming open. And I'm going to take a couple of more bearings to make sure that we get this really dialed in, make sure we get it right. Because if they see the torpedo wakes and it doesn't take out the ship, we are nose to nose with these guys. That would be really bad. Waves making it very difficult to get a good reading on this ship. But it appears to be... Well, it's fluctuated. From like 15 to 16, now to, down to 1400 yards. So now I'm not as confident about this shot, or about my information. Now we're back up to 1600 yards. God damn. I wonder, you know what, let's switch over to the periscope, which doesn't have as much of a zoom, so it's a little more steady. Okay, there we go, so still 1600 yards. That agreed with the previous reading by yes, about 15 yards, so... And she's starting to pull away from me. We don't have a good angle, so I think... We have a good solution. It's about time to fire. Torpedo depth is set as shallow as it'll go. I hope it's enough. Fire one. One's away. Tube 2 is open. We'll give it 2 degrees left. Yes, sir. 
back down to eight and a half as we're starting to present a better target. Here goes two. Switch to three for an emergency tube. Okay, about 45 seconds to estimated impact. She's right there. Right there. I can see one of the wakes. It looks like the front one is actually right on target. That's the back one right there that we can see. 30 seconds to impact. Oh, I'm sorry, there's the second one. So that is the first. And that's uh, maybe going to go behind her stern. It's real hard to tell in the darkness. But we're coming up on the mark of impact. We're also starting to come really close and abreast with her. Alright, that's the first estimated impact point. No explosion. Looks like the Torpedo wake is aft of her, but here goes the second one, closing on her nose. This one was two degrees to the left. Look, it looks like they're converging. Come on, you son of a bitch. Huge waves bashing over the freaking bridge. Look, this thing's like right on target. Come on. Sail into it. It's not showing me the estimated impact time for the second torpedo. Yes, sir. Fuck. It's either missed or it's gone underneath her, so you know what that means. Torpedo missed, sir. Yes, sir. For those of you who didn't like what I was doing before, you're really not going to like what I'm going to do now. <laughs> yes, sir. Current speed. Come on, they're right there. We don't have time for misses. 1,500 yards, wait for the clearing in the trough, in the wave, let her rip. And that's an impact right on the waterline. Ooh, searchlights comes on. She knows something's up. Wow, looked right at us for a second there. Searching wildly in the wrong direction. Ooh, right under the waterline, I think. Huge geyser out off the left stern of the ship. Here comes the spotlight again. Oh. Looking behind us, it looks like. Oh, huge hit on the main weather deck. Aft port side. Yes, sir. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yes, another waterline hit. Huge wave separating us and the ship. Oh, she's on fire. Look at that. Burning. She's so close. I could whip a rock over there. And yet, the waves and the darkness appear to be protecting us still. Back down to slow speed. Let's cut down on the bow wake. Come on, come on, come on. Another round. Fire. And it's another hit. I saw the explosion through the wave. Our low profile, these tall waves 
we're shooting from between the crests. I think it's masking our presence from these guys. Ooh, look at that. Secondary explosion, fire intensifies. We hit him below the waterline on that time. The searchlight is out. That's an interesting sign. Oh, huge wave over the bow of our ship. And as it clears, another round is away, hitting below the waterline again. Yes, sir. This is the beauty of the S-Boat's 4-inch gun compared to the 3-inch gun of the fleet boats, which were found to lack a certain amount of power. It was, uh... You definitely would not be able to do this with a 3-inch gun. The 4-inch gun packs a hell of a wallop. Oh, and a huge explosion on the aft end of the deck there. I think I hit a gun mount. Reloaded, ready to go. Wait for the wave to clear. Round away. That might have been a miss. Hard to tell. I'm trying to keep our course closer to this escort because I don't know what the other escorts are doing right now. I'm hoping yes, sir. they don't know where we are. Yes, sir. Another hit. There's a big explosion. This ship is in trouble. She has a very strange way about her right now. I think she's taking on water. Yes, sir. Oh, look at that. Huge list to port. And nose hide. The, the stern is sinking. Look at that. She's going nose high out of the water. We're fucking her up with just the deck gun. I'm just going to keep pounding rounds into her until she disappears. Super high nose out of the water. One more round. And it's a huge hit. Yes, sir. Okay, secure the deck gun. Yes, sir. Oh, God, there she goes. Huge explosion. Okay, the door is open. Flank speed. Holy fuck! Yes, Second escort just off to our left. Spotlight coming on. Yes, Holy yes, fucking sir. A! Yes, sir. Crash, 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 dive! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dive, dive. I just hit the C key about 40 times. Okay, back on course. Let's get down underneath the thermal layer just in case this escort does have listening gear. Yes, sir. We're reloading our torpedo tubes. We're just at flank speed doing the best we can to continue closing on this huge convoy, which we can now see arrayed in front of us, all of the sonar lines. This escort practically bumping into us and was not able to see us. And now here's the second one joining them.
Will they detect us? They're about a thousand yards behind us and to the left at this point. At least the one that we can hear. I think one has stopped its engines and is searching. They seem to be so fucking confused. If they keep looking up there, this might actually be our opportunity to sneak in even faster. Okay, we're up to 80% on tube one. I'd like to reload the tubes and uh, be able to fire full salvos up into some merchant ships if possible. Those escorts are falling away further and further behind us, so back up to the surface we go. We're going to risk a high-speed run to close in for torpedoing. Ready at any second to crash dive back down. Yes, sir! So not only did we open the door in that escort screen, but now half the escorts are behind us with their heads up their asses looking for us, which means that we've actually drawn off the escorts and then slipped past them. We now have nothing going on. There's the guys behind us, the two ships, dead astern, searching crazily, but only in that particular area, which means that we've got... Well, nothing off to our left. And the escort to the right is so far away, I don't know if he's going to be any factor either. Alright, 1.46 in the morning now. The hours are ticking by. Escorts are still behind us. We're closing on the convoy, but not very quickly. Escort's still visible, still searching. I am keeping an eye on them because if they stop their search and then come back to return to their escort stations, they may accidentally run into us and we don't want that. Torpedo tubes have been reloaded, so let's put the gun crew back on the deck gun. Who's got the best? I'm looking at the uh, the best weaponry scores of these guys of our watchstanders. So we're gonna we're gonna put the best guys on the gun because, like before, we don't have time for missed shots. Every round that goes out is telling people where we are. Here's a possible. Good target, large modern composite freighter. And we're going to set up torpedoes at 15 feet of depth. Huge waves still crashing over the yes, bridge. Sir. New course, two, zero. Yes, sir. Ooh, there's one of those escorts. Looks like he's maybe heading back into position. So he may come alongside us. I'm not gonna lie, after the escort being so close to us on the surface before. I have a huge amount of confidence right now that we can just do what we yes, need to do Nicholas, with impunity. Two, one, six, yes, sir. Ooh, 
Ooh, there's a nice big ship that's perpendicular to us. This is such a target-rich environment, it's difficult to sort of pick one. And also, they seem to be moving back and forth. I can't tell if they're actually zigzagging or if they're just maneuvering to avoid each other in the big convoy. Yeah, here comes this guy bearing 210. He's got the searchlights off. I think he's just full power, flank speed to get back into position. Yeah, look at this. We got a traffic jam up here. We got ships going left to right, right to left. There's our target. There's that large modern composite who has stopped. She's dead in the water to avoid collision with at least two other ships, which means she is a sitting duck right now at 1,500 yards. And there's just a few ships in front of her, too. If we miss, we may hit something else with a full spread of torpedoes. So let's do it. Fire one. Okay, four is away. What a time to get distracted by real-world stuff. Uh, <laughs> right in the middle of uh, the most important time, torpedo launching. But all four torpedoes are now away, on their way out. There's that escort just to our left, bearing 250, perpendicular with us, unaware of what's going on. We've got all four fish out in a spread, eventually. And we've got a, a medium-sized ship here coming right at us, so we're going to bank off to the left. But he is awful, awful close. And we're going to wait for possible detonations out there in the distance. In fact, this guy is real close and perpendicular to us. Engage with the deck gun. Oh, yes! Perfect first hit. Waterline. Well, when we're taking fire back, small arms machine gun fire coming at us. Oh, jeez, and in my excitement, I hit six instead of five. Back to flank, please. Don't go backwards. Switching targets. Okay, luckily nobody is up on the bridge with me. Ooh! Torpedo impact way out there! We got something. We're taking damage, sir. Torpedo Another impact! And a report of taking damage. We hear bullets ricocheting off the superstructure. But we've got nobody up on the deck. Well, I guess we've got people on the deck gun, but they're not shooting in that direction, so... I'm not too worried about casualties. Deck on guys are now firing yes, wildly over the target. Runner. Yes, sir. And the bulkhead is being repaired from that light damage, so no problem. Machine gun's yes, not going to stop me. New course. One, five. Yes, sir. Whew. Big explosion on this little freighter here. Yes, sir. Looks like all of our torpedoes Runner. missed yes, the large man. modern composite, though, unfortunately. Which is right fucking there. Whoa, that's the sound of artillery. The escorts yes, have sir. seen us. Pop the valves. Get down, get down. Torpedo missed, sir. 
And clear the gun. Look, we're literally part of this convoy right here, and suddenly... The escorts were able to see us. I mean, obviously because of the, the gunshots, but they weren't able to see the gunshots before, so something... Allowed them a little bit of it, uh, better visibility this time. Bearing six five long range. Yes, sir. Hard to starboard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back down at depth. Trying to get out of the area that they last saw us in, in case they drop depth yes, charges. We also don't want to fall behind the convoy. I want to stay with them while we reload torpedoes and then come back up, make another run. One, five, seven. You can see we came down in such a hurry that the deck gun is still uh, angled off to the right. Didn't have time to stow it properly. Yes, sir. 2.05 in the morning now, coming back up to periscope depth. We'll take a look around, take a look at the convoy. Several ships still on fire from the various torpedo and gun hits. Scope's coming up. Let's take a look around. And tube one is ready. Good sign. Yes, sir. New deck. Four, four. Can't see over the waves. There they are. Okay, so yes, a little sir. bit further out after okay. some crazy maneuvering underneath the waves here, but uh, die, they're not so die. far away. Medium modern composite. This looks like maybe the one that we smacked with the torpedo. She seems to be not moving very fast. Twenty six hundred yards. We've got the one torpedo loaded. If she's already damaged and going slow, maybe we could pop a single fish into her and finish her off. She's lined up for a pretty good shot right now. It's a little long distance for the Mark Tens, but not impossible. Got a draft of 23 feet and a speed of 17 knots, which she's definitely not doing. She's dead in the water. We have an escort out in front of us at 350. One of the ones that was firing at us. He came to investigate, but now he's left the area, is heading back to the front of the convoy, scanning the horizon now for the, uh, the aft... Or, you know, the, the rear escort, the one that's behind the convoy. And there she is, pretty far out. And there's a large uh, composite three, one, long range. that we were originally aiming at. Some sort of tanker, maybe? Oh, look at that. That looks like a troop carrier. Or a, a, a passenger liner, small passenger liner. That could be the evidence yes, that this is actually an invasion fleet. Any troop transports are definitely uh, important targets. Maybe we can line one up later. But here's our medium modern composite that is dead in the water. She's now lagging behind the rest of the convoy and coming into perfect firing position for us. I think we're just going to pick her off. 
marker on the map. See which way she's drifting, but I think she's just stopped. Yes, sir. New course. One, three. Yes, Zero. sir. Ahead full. All right, maneuvering into position now. Surface Bring us back up top, please. Surface, surface, surface. Deck gun is manned, ready to go. We have two tubes ready, waiting on the other two. Back up on the surface now. Fire at will. She's already taken extensive damage. I'm gonna try to finish her off with the big old deck gun. And save our torpedoes for a different target. There's a good hit. Yes, sir. Ahead one third. We run the risk of alerting the escorts to our location once again, but maybe if we can hit her fast and hard, we can just sink her before they arrive. Ooh, hard to tell. I think that might have gone over the bow on the yes, far sir. side, so bring the range back just hard a little bit. Yes, full left rudder, and then we'll go full right. I'm killing off our speed because now we're sailing past her. Aiming at the front cargo hatch. There we go. There's a good hit. Yes, sir. Big start. fireball coming off Heart the front start. there. Yes, if I can distribute the rounds between the forward and aft parts of the ship, and especially towards the hatches, maybe something will ignite in the cargo. Ooh, that was a good hit underneath the water line. That was a splash and an explosion. Yes, sir. Runner. Runner. And she's less than a thousand yes, yards uh, exactly at our three o'clock. 90 degrees. Lookouts are spotting ships at various ranges and bearings. Mostly, I'm just worried about the escorts. There was one fairly close out in front of us. Good hit. We're under attack, oh shit, we've got rounds coming in again. Yes, sir. Pumps damaged. Periscope damaged. Hard to board. Hard to board. All right, breaking off to the left. As we continue to fire, she's burning now. We've got light damage and light injury. Nothing particularly bad, though. Fuck you, you're gonna pay for that, bitch. Yes, sir. Hard to starboard. Yes, we got sir. just a little too close, I think. They were able to track our position from the, uh, from the gunshots. At this range, though, she seems to have problems pinning down exactly where we are. There we go, bulkhead repaired. Look at this Swiss cheese. Just holes everywhere. That was an incoming round. Crash dive. Clear the deck. Dive, dive. Looks like the escorts picked us up again. Back down we go. 
Oh shit, the gun is still firing. Get off the gun, you guys. We've got a bit of spraying water out of that flange here in the control room. Shouldn't be anything too major, though. Again, it was just uh, machine guns that winged us. Electric's coming online. Yeah, health is at 95, 99, so he only had like one point of damage, so very minor bumps and bruises again. And very light damage. Nothing to write home about. Let's mark this bitch. If we have to circle back around and finish her off with torpedoes, I will do so, but she's not getting away. We just have to uh, deal with some escorts real quick for a few minutes. There we go, they just fixed that flange. Damage control team, Johnny on the spot. That medium freighter burning way off in the distance, but here's the nearest escort, nowhere near her or us. So they must have put out one round and then lost us. And here's our victim herself. She's making dying sounds already. Decks are awash. Got some trucks there up on the, uh, the, the front hatch. So she is going down. Meanwhile, we've got an escort coming in from behind us, actually. I was wrong. This is the nearest escort, and she's got spotlights on, and she is, she is checking out the sinking ship. Seeing if we're still around, but uh, she's quite astern of us. Good news is we've got all four torpedo tubes loaded and ready to go. We'll clear the deck gun. Put the topside team back on damage control. We've got a mine layer ahead of us and a mine layer behind us. So this is a little interesting. we got to get away from these guys to get back to the uh, convoy, which is right here bearing like 335, pretty far away. There's that mine layer. She's actually heading away from us. So she's not actively searching, just the one behind is. But we got to find a window so we can get back up on the surface and rush past and get, again, close to those uh, big ships for a proper torpedo attack run now. Yes, sir. New deck. One, five, four. New dive, deck. Dive, dive. Five, five. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there we go. She's going down. We just got the notification. Oh, man. Pitiful little lifeboat trying to get away from the wreck on this terribly pitch black night in heavy seas. But we officially finished her off, so that's great. We don't have to come back around and spend any more time on her. We can just head straight back for the convoy. Now that we're underneath the temperature inversion again, we're back up to flank speed to get away from those escorts. That mine layer out to our left is about 2,000 yards out, approximately. The coast is looking fairly clear, so let's head back up to periscope yes, depth, sir. reassess periscope the situation. Depth. Passing 70 feet 
scope is coming up. It'll still be underwater for another five or ten feet or so. But there we go. Now it's cresting the waves back up, looking around. We'll see if there's anything close that was sitting quietly that we couldn't hear on the hydrophones, but I don't think there is. Yeah, 255, there's the one of the mine layers. Pretty far out. Yes, sir. Surface the boat. Surface, surface, surface. <laughs> Watching the Christmas tree. There we go. All red lights. Vents and hatches are open. We're back on the surface. Flank speed. We're paralleling that mine layer. Pretty far away, though. They shouldn't be able to see us. We've got to work our way back into firing position again. And there's the convoy just out to the left, a couple miles away. Not reaching the horizon yet, so they're less than five miles. Yes, sir. New course, two, one, eight. Yes, sir. Checking the horizon for surprises. Good at the moment though. Fuel is at 68% and our battery is also just under 75. So I'm not going to bother charging it yet. Okay, continuing to track our happy little convoy. It's now 3.20 in the morning. We have an escort way out to the north there. The wing escort is down to our south. And we're closing back in on the middle of the giant convoy. Which is continuing to proceed at about 8 knots in a southwesterly direction. Closing right in, very close to the tail end ships. Maybe just a mile away now. Small modern composite freighter is what we're looking at here. It's sort of a neat uh, dark paint scheme. And she is the tail end Charlie. It's the very last ship in the line. Yes, sir. So maybe I'm thinking yes, we come alongside of her parallel and maybe pick her off as the straggler. I'd still like to find one of the large ships. There's actually one right there that uh, maybe is even the one we were tracking before. She's back in one of the middle columns, not too far away. I'd really like to claim one of those. So 3.30 in the morning now. We've been tracking these guys for uh, four and a half hours. We made first contact just after 11 o'clock at night. Yes, sir. Runner. Runner. Yes, sir. Let's inch in ever so closer to this little, uh, this little merchant guy here. Just a few degrees in and we'll start Closing that gap up. Ah, oh, shit. Now she's turned away. I don't think they see us. It's just random maneuvering, but... I mean, she put her fantail almost completely to us. Sort of spoiling my, uh... My good torpedo shot. She's... 
only 900 yards. I mean, we're super close for a good shot. But if she doesn't come back perpendicular with us, I don't want to waste torpedoes. So let's see what she does. Oof, there's that escort just off to the left and ahead of us. None the wiser. And there's Big Bertha. It was looking pretty good, and our, our small composite continues to veer away from us, giving us a really shitty torpedo shot. After about five or ten minutes of maneuvering, waiting to get into position, now she just wrecks it through random happenstance, which, you know, that's exactly what real sub commanders had to deal with all the time. The random turn away, sometimes even after the torpedo launch, the random zig denies them the hit. Yes, sir. New course, two, zero. Okay, we're yes, getting sir. a little outside of the convoy, so we're going to bring the nose back around and away from that escort. Back towards the center of the group. that large composite is maintaining a fairly straight course and we continue to come up alongside of her, I'm more and more inclined to uh, to go ahead and make the attack run on her. Yeah, look at... There goes our target. Completely fucking up our solution. Alright. Well, thanks a lot for that. I guess you get to live. <laughs> There's the big girl. She's turning all which ways, too. No activity from the escort at the moment. As long as we're not firing, they don't really seem to know where we are. Ooh, big waves coming over the top of the bridge, soaking us all. Probably going right down the hatch into the control room. Coming up very close to the tail end of the convoy now. Look at this. We are right in formation. We're in between two of the convoy lines. Escort fairly close, exactly at our 270 mark, out to the left. The other escort is way off to our right, though, no problem there. Yes, sir. No Let's inch in towards the center a little bit yes, more. Sir. We're, like, right behind a second column of ships in front of us. Nobody is seeing us at the moment. This is a small modern composite off to our left. less than 600 yards, as much as I do want to attack one of the big ships, there is the consideration that smaller ships I could put less torpedoes into, I could sink more ships maybe with our remaining uh, fish. So, something I'm considering also as the, uh, as the picture, you know, the, the tactical situation keeps changing moment to moment up here. So, deciding on a final target is going to be a very quick decision when it finally comes. Yes, sir. New course, two, zero. Yes, sir.
that hard turn to port for her has actually put us almost exactly a beam with her. And it looks like everybody is cutting back to the right. That large modern composite is directly ahead of us, which we're now so close to this convoy, the risk of collision is becoming greater and greater. We really got to watch out for that as well. Estimated target speed is 10 knots. Let's get some bearings on her. This might be the perfect opportunity for firing. Readjust that target angle. She's basically perpendicular with us. One more speed. Estimation, 9 knots. Yes, sir. Bring the speed back down so we don't overshoot her. Oh, yeah, she's turning right back into us. Torpedo depth is set. She's got a speed of 13, a draft of 18. So we're 10 feet less, which is what I like to do. We're at 8 feet. We'll angle it left. Tube 3 is away. Opening 4. We'll offset that. 0. Go right down the throat. And there goes 4. So 2 torpedoes away. 30 seconds to impact. The rest of the convoy cutting directly ahead of us. We also run the risk of getting too close where they might see us and begin to fire. There's the estimated impact point. Torpedo is now beyond it. Oh, and there's a hit! Right on the aft side. Letting her on fire. Huge geyser. And there's the second one, almost in the same spot, just a little forward. Let's mark her. I hit her pretty far back. Possibly did damage to her screws. So she might be dead in the water too. She's also a small enough ship that two torpedo hits might be enough to just sink her. Look at this. Big fucker's cutting right across our bow. Can we snap off a shot real quick? She's only 300 yards. And we lost the identification on her. Nope, she's too close. Too close to fire. Does she have guns? Some of these large composites have the 5 inch deck guns on them, which we need to watch out for. Okay, so we can't fire right now, but all hope is not lost. We're just going to keep tracking her. She continues to swing around to the left then we may become parallel with her on her port side. Uh, we could put a couple torpedoes into her from, from that side of her instead. Yes, sir. New course. Oh yeah, look at her burn. Yes, sir. The whole after deck on fire. There's the escort, who's actually on the far side of the merchant, so actually being uh, blocked from their sight by the burning ship. Oh shit, look at that, we've got a fucking, like a medium-sized merchant just to our side. Looks like they stopped to avoid ramming in to that large ship, and they have guns on them. We need to separate from them, they're too close. Or maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We give her some what for. There we go. Direct hit. Close range. Yes, Fuck you. Flank. flank speed will peel off to the port. There's their deck gunners, who are very surprisingly not firing at us. Yes, sir. Back, Back emergency. emergency. 
God, she's just getting so close. Let's slam on the brakes. We'll let her fly by. We'll pull a Maverick maneuver on her. We've got another ship behind us circling around. Keep an eye on her. Try to light this bitch on fire. Ooh, good hit. Back up yes, to speed. Ahead, fly. We'll cut to her starboard yes, side now. She's continuing to burn. Oh, she's low in the water, too. Aft end of the weather deck is below the waves. Here's our large modern composite target. She's way out to the right now. Sort of bad angle. So here we are, we're in the middle of this enormous convoy, sowing confusion, fear, blasting all the ships around us. The escorts don't know where the hell we are. Even if they did, they'd have difficulty firing without hitting their own ships, which they might be reluctant to do, or they do it anyways and help us out. But so far, they're not even aware of where we are. We've got a small ship burning off to our left. We're Swiss cheesing this medium ship out to our uh, port side, left. And I'm back up to flank speed, trying to close back on that large modern composite, who just saw where we are, oh man, and lobbed around right towards us from their five inch deck gun. Okay, quit firing. Don't let them know where we are. I mean, they know where we are. But don't give him uh, any help to zero in their sight. So back down to periscope depth. Contact. Warship. Closing. Down she goes. Long range. Another target slips beneath the waves. Ah, oh, jeez. Periscope work is very difficult with these constant waves. There we go. Uh, large modern is now 1,300 yards. Estimated 9 knots. Warship contact out ahead of us at 334. Hmm. Whatever it is, I can't see it through all these other ships, so it must be one of the front escorts way out ahead of the convoy. Here we've got these, uh, we got a couple of big, uh, large composites cutting across from the right side of the convoy coming left through, so confusion continues to rain. Ships are just going every which way, almost colliding with each other. This motherfucker is coming right across our bow from right to left. Large modern composite. Yes, sir. This might be the perfect opportunity I've been waiting for. We've got two torpedo tubes ready to go. Coming down to 900 yards. She is super close. Opening tube one. This is the shot we've been waiting for. Torpedo depth is set. Tube three ready, sir. 
and tube three is now ready as well. So we have three torpedoes available to put into her, which is perfect. That would be the three torpedo spread that we need for a big ship like this. Coming down to 750 yards. Let's get another bearing. Actually, 733 yards. Estimated 10 knots. We'll go offset left first, so if she slams on the brakes, the other two will still hit her. And she's coming right perpendicular with us, 90 degrees. Fire one! Center of the gyro. Two's away, switching to three. We'll go two degrees right for an aft end hit. And there goes three. Oh, impact right up front, right underneath their five inch gun. Perfect. And there's a second one, surprisingly in almost the same spot, but she's on fire now, burning crew members right in the middle of that inferno. And there's the third hit, also up front. A bit surprising with this close range, I would have expected the uh, the even distribution of front, center, and rear, but they all hit up front. But it's still three torpedoes. They weren't in the, the exact same spot, so as long as they've hit in a couple different compartments in the ship, she should have water flooding in right now. And we'll go ahead and set our torpedo depth for tube number four, although it'll be a few minutes before it's ready. But huge hole in her hull, below the waterline. She should be taking on tons of water right now. Probably not going to be dead in the water, because we weren't anywhere near the engine room or, or screws. But, if she takes on enough water, that'll still slow her down. Anything to knock her out of the, the safety of the middle of the convoy. If she becomes a straggler, then we can pick her off very easily. Okay, back down to the temperature inversion while we continue to work on tube number four. With our final torpedo, by the way, one torpedo left. Here's our burning victim cutting across right in front of two other ships, including this one in the foreground, which is one of those passenger liners, possibly troop ships. Four oh eight in the morning now as we're coming back up to periscope depth. Tube 4 is ready. We've got a singular torpedo left. Where are we going to put it? Do we use it to finish off the stricken large composite? Or do we put it into a smaller ship in the hopes that we sink it and then use the deck gun to finish off the big boy? We do have some smaller targets around us, sort of in all directions here. Yes, sir. There's the large modern. You can see she's, uh, she's listing to port, and she is a bit bow down. It is possible that if we just wait her out, she might just sink on her own, and then we would save a torpedo. On the flip side of that, if we let her get too far away and she doesn't sink, then we've we've wasted our opportunity. So it's a it's a delicate balance, trying to feel out the situation and holding off as long as possible to maybe save this last torpedo. She is pretty far away already, 2,200 yards, and uh, an opening.
Here's a view of the damage. Two massive holes beneath the waterline. Sounds of fire coming from within the ship. Nobody's up on the deck, so she's in really bad shape, but is it bad enough shape? Know what I mean? We've got something right in front of us here. There's that little liner. Just sort of waiting for the opportunity to present itself with a perfect shot. We'll sort of see what comes up. Is she getting deeper underwater? She might be. If her props start coming up out of the water, we know she's really fucked. That'll be a good sign. We're not quite there yet, though. Yes, sir. Surface the boat. Yes, sir. Surface, surface, surface. All right, quarter after four, back up on top we go yet again. Let the fun continue. Christmas tree goes red, we are back in business up on the surface. Quick check for any surprise escorts, but we are still in the clear. We have something like a hundred rounds of deck gun ammo that, uh, is begging to be gone through. Yes, sir. Standard propulsion. Large modern composite decks are awash. She's still moving, but looking more and more gimpy as she goes. Almost 4.30 now, we're back into the tail end, yet again, of the convoy. There's that large modern that we were tracking before. Let's come back around right onto the, uh, the course that I've already laid in. That'll bring us right parallel with these ships. They don't know we're here. Man, she's looking worse and worse. I think she's gonna sink. We can always put a few rounds into her if she's not, but she's that bad off. I don't think she needs another torpedo. So now, here's the thing. We only have one torpedo left, so as alluring as another big... Oh, she's got a 5-inch gun up front. Watch out for her. As alluring as these big targets are, we're probably not going to be able to sink one with, un with only one torpedo. So, I think at this point... Concentrating on one of the smaller ships and just trying to take it out with a single torpedo or maybe a torpedo and gun combo, that's going to be the way to go. Oh, there it is! She is sinking. Yes! <laughs> Oh, as we pass by so close, we could just reach out and touch her. Down to the depths she goes. What do we got here? Medium modern composite. She is perpendicular with us. Or no, actually, medium modern split. What the hell are you? Oh, that looks like her. Small modern composite. Okay. So we got a small, right there, sort of perfect firing yes, position. Let's make this happen real fast. What do we got? She's at 400 yards. Ooh, that's danger close. Yes, She's almost within uh, the arming range of the torpedo. So full back, 
She's also turning towards us. That's not a good sign. That's going to wreck our shot. Ooh, there's that big girl crossing our path. Again, got to watch out for her. She's got a big old deck gun up front. Oh, and the large composite cutting across all of our paths is now making the small composite turn into us to port, wrecking our shot, and also causing some considerable danger here. She's almost close enough to see us and start shooting if she has guns. You know what? Back to flank yes, forward. Let's just shoot out in front of her. I don't want to hit her. Down we go. I'm worried. I'm worried that she's going to aim towards us. It looks like she is. I think she's seen us. She's on ramming course. Get down. Pop the vents. Move. Fucking dive faster! Dive, dive! Oh my god, is she gonna hit us? Jesus Christ! Contact! Merchant! Moving away! Oh my god, down to 60 feet just in time. She passes right behind where we were. Getting a glimpse of us, trying to ram us, but we've escaped just barely. Let's recalibrate here. Current deck. One, two, zero. And we'll come back up and look for another target. Wow, that was... That, that was close. Contact. Merchant. Constant distance. Bearing. Two, three, one. Short range. Two, three, one. So over there. Okay, yeah, so that's that's that small composite that just tried to get us. She's just off our aft port quarter. Let's go ahead and let's do all stop, come back up to periscope depth and let her sail by and then reassess, see what we've got going on. So here's another thing to consider as we're coming up. It's now 4.30 in the morning. We've been tracking these guys for uh, five and a half hours. And we only have one torpedo left. The sun's going to be coming up soon. I mean, relatively soon. I actually don't know when sunrise is. But, you know, if it comes up within the next hour and a half or so, we got to consider that as well. So... Let's try to fire this one torpedo and then get the hell out of here and retreat back to a safer distance where we can maybe observe the convoy and continue to report its location so maybe somebody else can take a shot. Maybe the Allies can send aircraft in to strike or maybe vector another sub into the vicinity. I would love to see that. Oh, she's Bearing. close. Three, four, five. Long range. Oh, man. Again, perfect firing position on this large composite, but what am I going to do with one torpedo? Yes, sir. She'll just shrug that off. Most likely. I'd rather not risk it. We got some smaller ships around. I'd rather wait for the perfect opportunity to fire on one of them. Like, here's the small modern composite that tried to kill us. Maybe we return the favor. Ooh, there's that passenger liner again. Man, that's one I would really like to take out.
Where are they? Passenger stuff is up front in the book. Well, that's a real troop trans. So, small passenger carrier. Most likely carrying Japanese troops. Draft of 17 feet. So we'll set 7 feet. We'll do the, the 10 feet below. Because the Mark 10s, at least in the game, can run anywhere from between 4 to 10 feet deep. Oh, man. Yes, sir. I cannot yes. see the water line with these, yes, these never-ending waves. Oh, oh, there's almost... One, come on. God, what a pain in the ass this weather is. I mean, obviously, it's both good and bad. There we go. 8.59, I think. It's pretty accurate. We'll try to snap off a shot real quick here. Tube 4 coming open. Oh, my God. We've got a big ship coming right into the firing path. If we fire now, we're going to hit the large composite. So hold, let's just hold on. Speed is not that high. It's going to be less than 13 knots. So let's just mark that. Come on, get your ass out of the way. Okay, now she's clear. Oh, I think she's turning away from me. We don't have a good... Oh, we don't have a good angle anymore. Damn it. That large composite blocked her shot, and now... Now we do not have a good firing angle on her. You can see the TDC is showing that the torpedo would come in almost from directly astern. Which likely means a miss. Well, shit. Contact. Virgin. Constant distance. Bearing. Three, two, seven. Long range. Oops, she's hard over to starboard now. All the various ships continuing to sort of zigzag within convoy itself. Oh wait, here's our target. Look, she's turned completely all the way around. Back to the right. Oh, this could be the opportunity we needed. Why would she do that? Is she coming or going? Let's say 45 yes, degrees towards us. Looks like she's coming right through the 45 degrees. Twelve hundred yards. I'm just gonna keep taking bearing readings on this thing. Oh, what the hell? Now it looks like she's actually reversing. Yes, sir. Ahead one third. Hold on. Yes, sir. What's going on? She must be backing to avoid something. Yes, sir. Rudder. Although, again, this isn't the end of the world. As soon as she pulls forward, we're going to be awfully close. And that might be the perfect opportunity to fire. She'll drive right into the incoming torpedo.
Coming down to a thousand yards now. Big splashes out. Oh, and there's a bow wake. So she's back on the move. Heading forward. Estimated one knot at the moment. Let's give her a few extra. We'll estimate five. Contact. Tube four Watch still it. open. Go ready to fire at any moment once we four. just get Two. that few seconds of opportunity which I think is coming up right here come on clear the waves I'm trying to do something here no that's close estimated seven knots oh it looks like she's peeling back off to port fire four quick and off it goes we have precious seconds before she turns out of the perpendicular, but she's so close. Look, the torpedo's right on top of her. Oh, yes, it's a hit! Pieces flying off, huge explosion. Good night. No torpedoes left, so there's no need for torpedo men to be down there. Oh yeah, she's taken on massive amounts of water already. Outstanding. One torpedo hit, taking her down. Props are out of the water and they're actually stopped, it looks like, too. Contact. Warship. Moving away. Bearing. Long range. Well, they're spinning very slightly, Contact. but yes, she away. is going Bearing. down. Yes, more confusion. Ships going back and forth all around her. Contact. Warship. Closing. Bearing. Two, two, two. Long range. Oh, her boilers just exploded. Huge fire suddenly starts as midships goes underwater and she's tail up. She's going to sink vertically right down. And we're back on the surface now. Gun is ready. Fire. Take the battery charge off once again. Yes, sir. We'll get back up to flank speed. We'll close on the convoy. It's gotten a little ahead of us. Escort off to our left and rear. Not super far away. There's the rear escort as well. It's five o'clock in the morning. You'll notice that there's actually a bit of dawn light coming up. Which means we have a limited time to work here because we're going to be more likely to be spotted by escorts. Not so pitch black as it was now six and a half hours ago. Switching targets. Oh yeah, lit that one up. Fire started in the aft hatch. We have 54 rounds. 55. Counting the one in the breach. going to expend as much as we can. Every round that hits and every fire that starts on board these ships is damaging or destroying equipment that might be used in an invasion. And any ship that's badly damaged is going to be out of the war for at least some weeks. So everything that we're doing is beneficial, even if we don't sink them. Buddy on the gun crew holding on for dear life. 
through the waves as they crash over the gun. Fire in the forward hold on this little ship now. Holes all over the hull on the port side. Get him! Ooh, that was a good underwater hit, I think. Now peppering her starboard side, so both sides of the ship. She's made this mistake of turning over to the right, presenting her other side. Oh shit. Escort danger close out to our right. That one might have fell short, hard to tell. Yes, sir. No course. Walk. Yes, sir. Let's not get too close to that escort. Let's creep back away over to the left. Guy's getting pretty bright. Still no moon that I can see, although there's a bit of a reflection off to my left, which actually could be a real bad thing. If there's a reflection on the water, we might be up moon from this escort. Yes, another good hit. Pieces flying off as she continues to burn. Causing major damage to whatever is in the front and aft holds on the ship. Whatever she was carrying is going to be wrecked. And of course the ship itself sustaining major damage. We have another ship crossing directly through the line of fire. Gun crew has switched target priorities to this one now, who's also already on fire. So we have two ships burning. Ooh, right over the top of the superstructure. There's that troop ship. Ordering the gun crew to change targets to the liner. If we can take out ground troops, that would be a huge help to the war effort. I don't know where these guys are going, but I don't want them to reach their destination. Just missed the fantail of the ship, splashing in between the liner and the escort right over there. That's not great. More likely to alert. Oh, Jesus Christ! Trying to creep closer to the liner is also creeping us closer. Oh no! Lights on! Dive, dive, dive! Yes, sir. They're looking right at us. Oh, round's coming! Right over the top of us. And from the left, too. We are getting cross-fired. Ah, 
Oh, fuck, we've been hit. Right down to test depth. Give me a damage report, please. Huh. Everyone seems to be okay. Health is at 99, 98 back there. We sustained a direct hit to the aft end of the ship. Still trying to figure out how badly we've been hurt, though. So far. Passing thermal layer. Doesn't look that bad. Okay, under the thermal layer now, back down to slow speed. Look at that huge hole in the rudder and the uh, in the dive plane brackets. But we're not actually showing any systems damaged. So no one was hurt and no major damage other than uh, some, some hull damage, so extremely lucky. Wow. They got a piece of us, but man, we fucking wrecked this convoy. It's worth it. So we spotted them all the way up there. We've been chasing them for 34 and a half nautical miles over the course of, uh, what are we at now? Six and a half hours. All night long, we chased these fuckers. And now we're out of torpedoes. We're definitely done for the night. At this point, we're just gonna sneak away. Head out to a safe distance surface, make sure that we're not actually damaged, and, uh, yeah, maybe shadow this convoy for a while, report it into HQ. Relief the launch. Battle stations. Oh, blessed relief for our poor crew members. Remember when we went to battle stations six and a half hours ago, and it was right after that, uh, that watch team got off of four hours of watch? <laughs> <laughs> so they're all very asleep now. Yeah, fatigue is up to 29 on these guys, but these guys here, Chief Woodward has 50% fatigue because they've been up for 10 hours now. So hopefully they can get a little bit of rest. They should be retaking over the watch at 8 o'clock, so they got about two and a half hours of sleep before they have to go back on watch. Okay, welcome back to the surface on the 15th of February. We've resurfaced on the far starboard side of the convoy. Uh, we're going to head out to about a five mile distance to shadow these guys. Six thirty-eight. sun is just breaking over the horizon now. We've been reporting the position of this convoy every two hours back to HQ. And I'm just going to hold position here and continue tracking them. Hopefully we can get some allied assets in to, uh, to sink some more ships. Seven o'clock. We're paralleling their course. We're maintaining about five nautical miles out for the moment. We've now traveled 48 and a half miles since our initial contact with the group. And again, we're continuing to send those those convoy reports every couple of hours and they keep telling us that they will 
Rounds incoming. Dive, dive. Yes, sir. Jesus Christ, two rounds landing short. We're five miles away, and now that the sun's up, the escorts have spotted us. Whew, very easily. There goes two rounds over the top of us. They're bracketing us. Oh, another one landing short. Let's get down. We'll go deep and hide from these guys. We've already used up one of our nine lives getting hit back there in the rudder. I don't want to get hit again. Current death. One, two, zero. Nine o'clock at night now. Um, we've just been tracking them all day long. We're continuing on a southwesterly course, heading for this choke point here between the Celebes Island and Borneo. And I'm I'm hoping that maybe, as we continue to radio in their position, maybe tomorrow uh, some friendly planes will finally be able to reach us. Okay, welcome back. It is uh, 1.30 in the morning on February 18th, 1942, so it's been three days um, since our initial action. We've just been shadowing them the whole time. You can see on the map, we've come all the way down through the Celebes Sea, Ship's and uh, it looks like we're heading towards the port of Balak Papin on Borneo Island. The convoys made two major course changes. You can see here just in the choke point, they made a pretty significant change. And then right here, they have now turned Ship's due spotted. west. Heading right towards Balak Papin port. Which honestly, I don't know at this point if that's Japanese held or if it's allied held and they're going to attack it. But we are in sort of an awkward situation. Luckily, it's nighttime because we've, by staying on our original course, these guys have cut behind us, so I'm just at flank speed, you can see 12 knots up on the surface, and I'm trying to separate away from the port side flyer escort here. It's morning now, in the shallow waters uh, south of Borneo. There was no significant action last night. We just took our leave of that convoy as it headed into port. And unfortunately, we never saw any allied aircraft or uh, submarines, as I was sort of hoping. So there's nothing left to do now. We have no weapons left, plenty of fuel. It's time to set course for home. It's early morning just west of Surabaya. We've been greeted by our friend, one of these summer's destroyers on patrol uh, just east of the port. We used our light guns to flash the two-letter identification code call and response to verify that we are, in fact, an American sub. And they were satisfied with our response, so now they just Chief give us a salute Barry. as we make Three, our way two, into eight. port. Long range.
And that concludes patrol number three in the USS S-38. We had a max, or we got a total tonnage of 15,600 tons, one warship and four merchant ships. Signed February 21st, 1942, the President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Navy Commendation Medal to Jim Stavridis, Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy, for service as set forth in the following citation. For gallantry and intrepidity and distinguished service in the line of his profession as commanding officer of the USS S-38 on a war patrol of that submarine in enemy-controlled waters of the Pacific War area. The notable successes of Lieutenant Commander Jim Stavridis and his command against a ruthless and formidable enemy enhance and sustain the high traditions of the United States Naval Service. So guess what? The Navy was so pleased with our performance that after three war patrols, we are going to be saying goodbye to the USS S-38. She has served us well, but we have proven that our skills far outpace the poor old sub. And she's ready to go be retired from frontline service and go train the next generation of submariners out in the South Pacific. We've been offered a new command, and I am definitely going to take it. Shiny new subtypes are constantly rolling off the assembly line as the war effort ratchets up. Due to your performance, you've been recommended to receive one of these newer boats as they are commissioned. You could, however, turn it down if you prefer your current one. Do you want a newer submarine? Yes, absolutely, I do. I hereby accept new command. So that is going to wrap up this episode and this war patrol. Extremely successful. Daring full of reckless aggression, something that the old-time submarine force would be very disapproving of, but the changing new World War II Navy submarine force is all about. So thanks for coming along with me on this one. We're going to uh, we're gonna wait. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Come back next time to find out what our new ship is and to follow the continuing adventures of Lieutenant Commander Jim Stavridis. I hope to see you then.